two one three two okay three two one oops one on let me see cloud all right ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen what's up uh we've got mel right here together with joe and once again welcome to another episode of the x factor podcast and today we have steve eckhart and uh, steve is a former marine steve is a seven-figure business owner he owns a gym he owns a, a lot of boot camp stuff he owns a he actually runs a project called the ltd project which uh, basically helps a lot of uh, male business owners be able to find their power be able to be more focused be able to prioritize and i think that's uh and the reason i want to get steve and his uh, and ray when our last interview we spoke to ray is because i think steve and ray i actually uh, got on zoom and listened to them i follow them on instagram and i think they have a lot of uh, very powerful mindsets in the times of uh, chaos and crisis like we have right now it's a lot of fear a lot of uncertainty uh, and I think Steve as a former Marine, Ray as a former Navy SEAL, have navigated those uh, times before. So I think their mindsets are very powerful. Uh, and I think they are perhaps uh, someone with a greater context that can help everybody here navigate this chaotic time. Steve, welcome to the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to having some fun. Right, Steve, uh, I have a lot of uh, questions for you and they all have to surround things like fear and uncertainty. So the first thing is uh, you have probably faced uh, fears and uncertainties far greater than being stuck at home in coronavirus times uh, but unfortunately a lot of people have not perhaps not been shot at have not dealt with enemies have not dealt with intense uh, pressure and fear how do you advise people like that who have never experienced anything like this before 3.2 billion people in lockdown how do you advise them to deal with this kind of fear uncertainty in tough times and how are you dealing with it right now yourself yeah awesome question first it goes back to your preparation so if someone wasn't prepared and wasn't living a certain way before obviously it's going to be a huge shock to them but if you were doing your due diligence and doing the things ahead of time, like some of the things we're going to talk about today, and if you have that stuff in place, whatever comes along is not going to be that big of a speed bump for you because you've already prepared for it. You put the pieces into place to help you adapt and overcome no matter what happens. But if let's assume that someone wasn't doing the things that they should have been doing before. So this is going to be a huge shakeup for them, right? So from there, it all comes down to th their perspective. How do they see this situation? You could, you could choose this situation to, bring out the worst version of yourself, or you could choose this situation to bring out the best version of yourself. And that's with any fear, any uncertainty, because th there's nothing in life that's freaking certain. What is certain? The, the way we were living before was not certain. That's, that's obvious because look, we just got screwed up just like that. Snap of a finger, completely done, completely different. So nothing is ever certain. So living, living with fear, and, and everyone has fear, we all have fear, we all have struggles. I see it every, every time something like that comes, I see it as a challenge. It's a test. It's a test to attest for yourself, show, your, show yourself what you're made of, to show your family what you're made of, the people around you, your team, what you're made of. So it's a true test of what you're made of. And just think of this as, as your training. You're training for hardship, you're training for panic, you're training for inconvenience. So you're conditioning yourself on how to deal with these things. So like embrace this struggle right now, embrace it. Like this is not the worst thing that's gonna happen to you in your life, I guarantee it, it's not. If, if being stuck at home is the worst thing that ever happened to your life, and you think that's the worst thing that's ever gonna happen in your life, you're mistaken. There's gonna be far greater crisis that you're gonna come across and issues you're gonna come across in your life in both personal and professional, in your business, with your family. Shit's gonna go sideways. So you have to realize this is not the worst thing that happened to you in your life. You have to embrace this as a time to use it as training. This is training, preparing you probably for something worse that's going to happen down the road. That's the way I always see it. No matter how bad it is, I see it as this is my training ground. This is my battle. This is my arena that's preparing me for what's coming next. Because I know that this is not the worst it's going to get. It's going to get worse. So yeah. I'm going to use this and prepare and train during this time to get ready for the, the battle that's up ahead. That's the real battle. And guess what? Once I get to that battle, I'll use that battle as training for the bigger one that's ahead. Because every mountain that you come across, every roadblock or obstacle that you come across, you get to it and it seems so fucking big. It seems so insurmountable. Like you can't get by it. And yeah. then you, you figure it out. You survive. You're like, I'm not dead. I'm, al I'm still alive. I survived, like hopefully. And you realize you look ahead after you pass that mountain and there's a mountain 10 times the size of it that you now have to get over. You're yeah. like, oh, let, let's go to work. Let, so that's what you have to think of it. It's all about your perspective, how you're seeing fear, how you're seeing obstacles, how you're seeing roadblocks. How are, and, and really it's telling me it's a test for you about who you are, what you stand for, and a test of what you're capable of. Use, use fear as a weapon. Use it as a fuel. Don't use it. People use it as an excuse to be, do less, to, to hide and sit and wait and hide in a dark corner. 
fuck that. You use fear as a weapon. Use it as fuel to push you forward, to, to motivate you. Like, and then think about who, who are you doing what you do? Who are you doing it for? Why are you doing what you do? Why are you working so hard? Why are you trying to be healthy and in shape? What do you do? And, and for me, that'd be my family, my kids, to be a role model for them. I see times of fear and times of challenge. I love it because it gives me a chance to show my kids, my family, wow. what courage means. And that's one of the, one of the Marine Corps core values is courage, honor, courage, and commitment. That gives me a chance to show my honor, my courage, and my commitment. They see it. They're like, wow, that's who I want to be like when I get older. And, that, and that's what it, what it comes down to. Wow. I, yeah, I think that's the kind of mindset that, that you know, folks, folks need to have. How about folks who are on the urge, uh, on the edge right now about to lose their jobs? Maybe the businesses haven't been open for about you know, six or eight weeks and, you know, they got to pay rent, they got to pay salary. And, you know, maybe after COVID's over, maybe the crowds don't come back and they're really stressed out by, by this. What kind of mindset advice do you have? Well, it comes out to having, having confidence and faith in themselves. Faith in themselves that they're going to, we say FIO, figure it out. Faith that they're going to have the ability to figure it out no matter what. And that's, that's the way I live. My business, I, I live in California right now. My gym is in New York. And sure, we, we consider ourselves great leaders. We have great businesses. But New York is getting hammered right now. I'm not even there in person. My gym could technically go out of business. And I won't sit and cry about it. I'll see, I'll see what mistakes I made. What could I have done better? How could I have switched things quicker? It could go out of business. I don't know. I, no, no, it could happen to anyone. Look at all the most, the top successful people in the world. How many times, how many times they went bankrupt? That's a difference between a leader and a successful entrepreneur and an unsuccessful one. You're going to fail. You're going to get hammered. You're going to get kicked in the mud. And when you're down and out, all the people are going to come out of the woodworks, all the haters, all the gossipers, and they're going to kick you and kick mud in your face. But the successful entrepreneur is the one that's going to get back up, figure it out, and regroup and rebuild. So I have no a fear about going out of business because if you have the right mindset and the right tools and the right training and the right perspective on things, you know no matter what happens, you can bounce back and start from scratch from day one because you have that skill set and you have that more. No matter what, no matter what industry, no matter what happens in the world, you, you need to have that confidence in yourself, that ability to say, I can bounce back. I can go, I can lose everything. Start from scratch today and still figure it out and make it happen. And, and again, it just goes back to that mindset. Wow. Uh, th does that mindset only work for folks that already have a skill set? Well, let's say a guy working a job all around, oh, all of a sudden Corona hits and now he's like, okay, maybe if this lockdown is over, I'll be out of a job. Uh, where do you get that faith and confidence that he can figure it out? Maybe he has never figured it out. If you don't have to just be successful or be a leader or have money to have confidence or to have belief in yourself. And, and it's, it's your decision. It's just your decision. Do you want to be a winner or do you want to be a loser? Do you want to be, have victory or you want to have failure? What do you, do you want to accept failure? Do you want to be a quitter? Like, I don't want to be a fucking quitter. I'll die before I quit. There's a, there's a book, A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I don't know if you've ever read it. Yeah. So Great book. that's the ultimate book of how to have a positive mindset. He was going through four concentration camps during World War II. Yeah. And somehow he wrote a book on the, finding the meaning of life, basically. So he wasn't successful at that point. He was in a prison camp in the worst conditions possible. So that, that book right there, just whenever I'm, I feel like I'm having a bad day, and I actually have it right here, I sit right here with it, I'll pull it out and just start reading part of that book. If I think I'm having a bad day, I'm like, you're not having a bad day. If, if sitting at home, locked in your house, we have electricity, you have TV, you have the internet, you have whatever, people have video games and Facebook, and we have Zoom and all this stuff. If you, if, if you think that's the worst day and you, you can't handle that, and you're in the house, right? The house that you, you work hard and you pay your rent or you pay your mortgage with the family that you chose, the, the, the spouse or partner, the kids that you created, and you're sitting in your house and you're thinking, this is the worst that life could possibly get. And the house you chose, you, you spent all your money renovating your house, building your house, decorating your house, but then you're going to sit and complain. Oh my God, I'm stuck in the house all day. Oh my God, my kids are driving me crazy. Oh my God, I'm going to kill my barrier in the backyard. If those are the things you're thinking, like, and you think this is the worst case scenario, you don't have a coronavirus problem. You don't have an epidemic problem. You don't have an unemployment problem. You have a, a fucking you problem. That's what you have, if that's the way you're thinking. Wow. Yeah. For, for those coming to you with a you problem, that means like, because you've worked with so many male business owners, what kind of emotional or what kind of mental concerns or challenges do they come to you with right now? And what do you say to them? And what are some of the top three challenges that they come to you with? Challenges, you said? Yes, correct. Is there any mental or any emotional challenges that they come to you with right now? 
Yeah, definitely. And probably it's just staying calm during the, the chaos. Like I say, calm conquers chaos is one of the sayings I have. People freak out. They overreact. They turn little things into big things. Like things are bad. Sure, they're bad. But again, they could always be a lot worse. So it's just staying calm, controlling your emotions. That's, that's all it's about is controlling your emotions, having emotional discipline. Because people overreact and then they end up making irrational decisions. They, they lose control of themselves. Like, have you ever punched a hole in the wall or known anyone that punched a hole in the wall? I have. <laughs> there you go, right there. Did, did you intentionally tell yourself, I'm going to go and punch a hole in that wall right now? No. No, you lost control of your emotions yeah, yeah. and punched a hole in the wall. And then your dumbass sit, had to sit there and spackle up the hole in the wall after yeah. you lost control of your emotions. And we've, yeah. all, we've all done that. We've all lost control of our emotions. So the number one thing is controlling your emotions, having strategies and tactics to control your emotions. And that could be done with meditation, with journaling, with exercise, with sleep, with the right diet. It's really just self-care. And, and the funny thing about it is the things that I'm telling people to do right now during crisis, during chaos, it's, it's so crazy. It's funny. It's just the basics. It's the fundamentals that they should have been doing their entire life but they weren't doing it. And that's why now they're freaking out during the crisis and chaos because they weren't eating healthy, weren't exercising the right way, weren't meditating, weren't journaling, weren't reading motivational books, weren't reading at all, weren't doing the things they should have been doing all along. So now these things sound like, oh my God, this is so brilliant. This is how you're surviving. No, this is how I've been surviving since, you know, 20 years ago. Like that's, that's so, people are just getting back to the basics of what they should have been doing all along. And maybe mm -hmm. at, they needed this as a wake up call to realize I better start appreciating things more. I better start taking care of myself a little more. I better start being a little healthy. I better start being a better role model. Things like that. I better start taking, you know, not, not getting complacent. In the Marine Corps, we say complacency kills. CK, complacency kills. The second you start getting complacent, people die on the battlefield. And it's the same thing in business. Your business will die if you get complacent. Your family will die if you get complacent. So that's, that's really what it comes down to, is just getting back to the basics, getting back to the fundamentals. All the things you should have been doing all along that you weren't doing. So look at this crisis as a blessing. This is a blessing. This is showing you everywhere in your life where you were missing, where you had holes, where, you, where yeah. things were slipping through the cracks. Like, yeah. thank God for this. That's why you need to think of it. Thank God for this crisis happening. It showed wow. me this, this, and this. I now know what I need to fix. So the next disaster that comes, and there will be another disaster, then it won't be a disaster when it happens because I'll be prepared for it because I, I, I filled in these cracks. And then wow. during that disaster, you'll have more self-awareness and discover more things about yourself and your family, your business that you should have already been doing. We're not doing anything new. All the business coaching we're doing right now has actually gone backwards. It's, it's freaking crazy. Like all the, the self-care stuff, all the business strategies and tactics we're giving are just going back to the basics because that's the basics that people got away from. And that's why they're unable to handle the crisis because they, they thought the basics were too basic, too simple, too boring. So they stopped doing it. They lost their routines. Wow. They lost their rituals and they lost it. And now they're freaking out. But if you just kept that, you just would have kept having your beats going when there's no crisis. And in peacetime, you have your beats down. Bop, 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 bop. Wartime comes, guess what? Bop, 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 bop. You just keep your beats going because you had it going all along. But now people are all thrown off because they weren't sticking to the basics and fundamentals before. Fundamentals are what wins the war. That's what wins the war. Wow. So I, I, watch this, uh, I think I watched this Oscar winning show before. They say that football, they have American football, football doesn't build character, football reveals character. And what you're saying is this crisis right now reveals whether A, you have character or it also reveals where your strengths and where your weak weaknesses are. That's what you're saying, yes? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And that's any crisis, any fear. It's showing you your weakness. It's bringing self-awareness. Self-awareness is the number one thing you need to... to work on right now realizing where you are weak it's revealing your weaknesses your flaws wow. the things that are holding you back in your success the things the reason why you're unhappy you're not unhappy because of a crisis you're unhappy for much deeper darker things than that and this is the time that you're gonna reveal those things to yourself wow <laughs> i don't know what to say i want to say amen to that that is wow that is incredible uh so, so steve i got a couple of questions here so there's a lot of unpredictability happening now so in singapore also we have a Things change moment to moment. I know in New York, I've been watching some of the news or so. Uh, things change from moment to moment. So a lot of people are saying, okay, cool. I can't make any plans because it's so unpredictable. How do I make any plans and adapt? You know, because there's like, you know, a week, things could change. Things, can, you know, you could come in and go, etc. What do you do and how do you make plans in chaos? Again, going back to that structure, but right now is 
going, keeping in mind what your longer term goals are, what your real, what are your, that doesn't change. That didn't change. Your long term goals haven't changed because of this. You might need to change how you go about it, but people are losing focus of what they were doing in the first place. Why were they doing what they were doing in the first place? And they're freaking out and they're just reacting to this specific situation. And of course you have to react to the immediate threat, but still keep in mind the big picture. Too many people are looking down and, and in in the darkness instead of looking up and out and, and staying in touch with what they're, why they're doing this, what their longer term goals are, what are their dreams, what's the reason why they're doing this. They, you can't lose touch with your ideal future, what you're looking to do. You have to continue to visualize it and get creative. Really, it's just being creative is what it comes down to. Like uh, people are obsessing with I'm out of work, whatever, times are hard, the virus, I'm stuck. They're obsessed with that. Use that obsession and use that towards good. Again, it's, you, you have a perspective. Do you want to use all this stuff towards good or towards evil? People use it towards evil. They're thinking the worst. They're thinking of the worst case. Be obsessed with your future. Be obsessed with getting better. Be obsessed with improving your skills, learning a new language, or learning the skills you need to get to your dreams. So if you don't lose focus of what your long-term dreams are, where you are now, there's skills you're going to need to learn and develop that are going to get you to that long-term goal and dream skills you don't have yet because you only have the skills that got you to where you are you're gonna need new skills to get to that different level you want to get to like what a perfect time right now what a perfect fucking time right now to learn those skills and develop those skills you're stuck at home you got nowhere to go you got nothing to do learn them now like this is like again it's a blessing thank god this happened i can now do those things i've been needing to do and i've been putting off and i've been procrastinating on instead of just complaining about Oh my God, this is so unpredictable and obsessing about how bad it is. Use that obsession towards your dreams, towards your goals, towards the skills you need to get. People are obsessing with social media and just watching the news all day, keeping a score of the, the deaths and all this other stuff. Keep oh, a score. Yeah. Of Keep a score wow. of your freaking likes. Keep a score where you're at. Keep your, your mind focused on that stuff and be obsessed with that. People are obsessing with the wrong thing. Obsessed with the, the good stuff, not the evil stuff. Obsess, obsessed with the positive, not with the negative. Wow, I think that is incredible. Steve, I want to ask you a question that is relating to men specifically. So uh, right now, really leaders, right? So, and, and you work a lot with, with guys, you know, so for, for everyone that listening who's a guy, I'm just going to ask this question right here. What do you think a role of a, of a man is in times of crisis like this? Because the last thing we want is a guy to come back, right? A family is looking for him for, for leadership and he's bitching and moaning and he's, oh, he's all lost, he's sobbing. That's probably not a very good idea. What do you have words for, for, for men right, right now? Maybe they're a leader, maybe they're an entrepreneur, maybe they're lost and confused also, maybe they don't have a job. What should they do? So not only hold themselves together, but the family unit together. Maybe you got a woman, they got kids, they're looking up to this guy and really maybe there's no plan. What, what would you say to a guy like this? So it's funny you ask this. Like just a, a couple of weeks ago, I talked to my son and we have real conversations like this and I asked him the same thing. I said, and he's eight years old. I said, Tyson, what do you think it means to be a man? And he's an eight-year-old. So I'm going to and this is the answer I'm going to give you. It's, it's what he gave me. And it's so straightforward. It's so simple. And then I'll give you the adult version of it. All he said is, I said, what do you think it means to be a man? He said, don't be a softie. That's it. Don't be a softie. That's what he said. That's what it means to him to, him to be a man. Don't make it meaning. Don't be a softie. Don't be soft. Don't be weak. Don't crumble under pressure. When bad things happen, don't, don't run and hide. Like you hear a bump in the night, you run towards the gunfire. You don't run away from the gunfire because you're the man, you're the protector, you're the provider. Don't be a softie. It sums it up so perfect from an eight-year-old. Don't be a softie. If I were to answer that, it would be very similar to don't be a softie. I don't know what, I mean, whatever language here, I guess I've already slipped up a couple times, but I just say simply, don't be a little bitch. Like seriously, that's what it, I've solved so many people's problems with that saying right there. I had someone tell me one time, I've been a personal trainer for like 10 years but I've been just doing my own thing, doing in-home training. I have so many clients. I really want to, I'm really stuck. I haven't made any more money in the last five years. I've been stuck where I am. I have this great location, some of that it's really cheap. It's an awesome location. I know I can make so much more money and build this huge successful business, but I'm, I just don't know what to do. I'm just, all I said is don't be a little bitch. And they went and did it. And now they have like multiple locations and it was just being a little bitch held them back. That fear that everyone has that little inner bitch inside them. We all have it. I have it. And that inner bitch tries to come out over that one shoulder, but then you have your beast come up over on the other shoulder, and who's going to win? Let your beast, unleash your beast, and overcome the inner bitch. So, wow. Steve, you have, uh, obviously, your clients have had you to be the, the guy who is raining down on them and say, don't be a little bitch. But I'm just curious, for yourself, right? Are you the one saying to yourself, or do you have a coach for yourself, or do you have someone telling that to you? 
Because sometimes, who knows, right? Everyone may have uh, their own blind spot. So how, how do you navigate your own blind spots? You say, what do I say to myself or who says yeah, it to me? Yeah, what was the question? Yeah. Like, how do you navigate your own blind spots and do you have anyone to coach you or something like that? No, everyone has coaches. Every, everyone needs a coach. Everyone needs a mentor. No matter who you are, no matter how successful you are, you need outside eyes to see what you're doing to hold you accountable. So I go to my circle of peers, like Ray, like Bedros, and I'll ask them for feedback. Or they'll see something and call me out on my bullshit if something's not the way that it should be. And I expect that. And that's So the thing is to find a, a, a group of people, a circle of people that are going to do that for you, that are going to not be softies and not be afraid to tell you like it is straightforward. But then if I don't have those people around in immediate time, I have and three, three different sayings that I tell myself all the time. And one of them is if I feel like I'm being weak about something and, and holding back on something, not stepping into what I'm supposed to be doing, is I'll tell myself what I just said. I'll tell myself in my head, stop being a little bitch. Stop being a little bitch. Or I'll tell myself if I'm feeling, we all feel, we all feel insecure yeah. at times. We all feel uncertain at times. I'm not going to say just because I'm a Marine, I'm not afraid to say that. Everyone has fear. Everyone has insecurity, right? At all times. Everyone does. We're human. So I'll tell myself right before I go in, right before we come on here, right before I'll go step on stage to talk to someone, right before I'll go train a, a, a coaching client or something, I'll tell myself, I am fucking awesome. I'll tell myself that over and over in my head. And that's all I need to switch that trigger. You need those triggers to take wow. you, to change your state. You need state to change your state. And the other one is I tattoo it on my arm. Wow. No hey, Mel, you got to show yours. Mel, you got to show yours. Mel, Mel has one as well. Yeah. yeah. I got the same thing too. <laughs> just as a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. You wow. Forget. They're like relics. They're relics. Yeah. They're right there. And then I have on wow. both, both logos on both fists. What wow. Is that? wow. Wow. That is incredible. Uh, Steve, I want to ask you a question. Also. Was it, here's another thing that is a real test for people right now, which is working from home. <laughs> because a lot of people are used to having a boss breathe down their neck, be, you know, being in an office, having that kind of thing, you know, having someone set deadlines for them. And, and this is not a good time for some people with no levels of self-discipline because they work from home and they're like, oh no, I'm going to keep going to the fridge. I keep watching TV. I don't get anything done. It's not good. I don't have my routine. I can't go to the gym. Blah, 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 right? And, and that's why they are suffering. Uh, what, what advice do you have for people like this? Is to create, well, you have to, they have to reorder their priorities, right? Because it is different for some people. For me, it's not any different. I've been working at home for four or five years. This is my home office. It's always been that way. So again, if you're prepared, the more pre prepared you are, the less it's going to affect you. So when this all happened, I just kept doing, it's just business as usual for me. Nothing really has changed. But for someone that now has to work at home, I can understand how it could be a challenge. It could be a struggle. So with it, the first thing they need to do is just reorder their priorities. Things are going to be a little different. Their schedule is going to be a little different. But now we're what? Two months almost into this thing? Two months into this thing? There's no excuse right now for them not to already have a new routine down. You need to set up your, a new routine with new priorities, a new schedule. Time block your day. Know what time you're going to take a, take a break or go for a walk. Know what time you're going to work out. Know what time you're going to hang out with your kids. And put that stuff on your schedule first. I'll put that on my schedule first. My workout, my time with my kids, the time I'm going to take a break, the time I'm going to go for a walk. That goes on my schedule first, and I'll schedule around that stuff. So I know in my head. So imagine, then when I go to go do my work, I know that, all right, I already have time scheduled for my workout. I already have time scheduled for my kids. I already have time scheduled to take a break and rest and recover if I need to. So you can focus just on your work instead of not having that stuff scheduled in and structured in the whole entire time you're working, you're preoccupying your head with my kids are going to think I'm a loser. I'm not spending any time with them. I'm going to get fat because I'm not working out. So knowing that I've already either done that already or have it scheduled a specific time and day, I could do have laser beam focus on that I'm doing. So it's just prioritizing, reordering the, their priorities. If their priorities weren't in order or if their priorities weren't in order, they should be good to go. But it's just recalibrating their priorities, recalibrating their, their mind, their day. And maybe they need to take some things they were working on and put them on hold. Like there's some things I was working on recently that now I had to reorder, my, you know, reprioritize a couple of things because our, our business is on pause and we're all on the lockdown. So maybe some projects need to be put on hold for now. And it's fine. People think they can't put on hold. Something maybe you're working on for a while, just now is not the time. Put on hold, wait till you get stabilized, reprioritize your stuff, reorganize your stuff plan out your next 60 to 90 days, assuming that this lockdown is going to last because I know it's, it's, it's going to be, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And when it does, it's going to still be a whole different normal. So it's really just reordering your priorities for the next, next one to three months, two to three months, really. Awesome. Uh, Steve, I have another question for you. So now a lot of leaders, a lot of entrepreneurs, they can't like be face to face and lead people, right? Because that was the norm. You know, you can always uh, get up in the, 
uh, probably in someone's grill, you know, pro probably do that kind of thing. And now the best you can do is do Zoom and maybe they've never done Zoom before. And, you know, how do you lead people in times like these that, number one, they've never faced before, maybe you have never faced, faced before, and you're not there in person to rally the troops and really get everybody there. People are working from home. Lord knows what, what, what they're doing. What kind of advice do you have for folks that need to lead and, you know, navigate this kind of thing and they haven't done it? The team is everywhere. What, what advice? Yeah, good question. And, it, and again, it goes, these are things that I'm going to say that should have already been getting done. And if they weren't, it's a perfect time to start doing them. Like, use, use this crisis and use this, everything about this as an excuse to do the things you should have been doing all along. So now you have an excuse to do it, like over communicating, reminding someone of stuff over and over and it re, re, making it very clear about what your expectations are, like straightforward because now they feel like they're on Zoom so, or, or virtual, they're gonna be more receptive to you telling them several times stuff because now you're not in person. So they, and that's the way it should be anyway. You should be during a crisis. You know, you can't expect people to just know what you need done. You, you can't expect them to know how to do it, especially during this crazy time. So it's just reinforcing those, your expectations, your high standards and expectations, because you might've been slipped off from that. You got complacent when you were in person. So now this is the perfect time to be, to go back to your core values, go back to your standards and expectations, go back to your standard operating procedures and, and dig into them and be like, now that we're virtually, let's really, let's get back to these checklists that we used to do. Let's get back to our standard operating procedures that we had that we kind of slipped away from. It's a perfect time to use it as an excuse to do all those things that already should have been getting done, to, wow. to communicate over and over your standards and expectations. And not, it's, not, it's not being fake about it, but it's using this as a reason to, to tell them over and over and over about how they, how, how they're, what, what's expected of them, what their jobs are. Like hints and complaints and stuff that's not straightforward, just kind of beating around the bush like you probably did in person because – whatever, you, you were uncomfortable, whatever, now's the perfect chance to be straightforward. Be like, all right, we're, we're not in person now, so you have a little more leeway to be straightforward and direct with them. Give direct instructions, give step-by-step -step instructions, get back to those basics, get back to your standard operating procedures and make it clear again and what their checklists are because they probably, the only reason they're having trouble doing that virtually is because they slipped away, again, they slipped away from the basics and got complacent because they were just through that day-to-day -day routine instead of staying focused. And as a leader, it's your fault because you weren't constantly reminding them of your core values, constantly reminding them of your standards and expectations, constantly reminding of parts on their checklist that they were skipping and, and, go, and not, not doing their due diligence on. And you let it slide because times were good. Everything was just rolling along. So now is your excuse to get back to that and get back wow. to that discipline and those standards. Like, so use this, again, it's finding every bit of juice you can squeeze out of this orange during this time. There's so much, so much you can get out of this. So many opportunities you can get out of a crazy crisis like this. Like, and, wow. and that's just another example of Steve, 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 there's, there's one thing I realized, which is, you know, you have this infectiously, uh, well, funny is the word, infectiously, but it's really infectiously positive mindset to take anything that is negative and really use it in a very positive way. I want to talk about one thing that perhaps you went through, which is the Marine boot camp. It's probably hell week and all, all, all that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people think that the, the entire enlistment thing and what it takes to be a Marine might be, you know, a lot of muscles, a lot of fitness. But, but I've watched a few documentaries before and apparently it's not the people with the biggest muscles that, that get through that. It's not the people, people who are the fittest. What kind of people get through it? And at the end of the day, how are you able during the toughest of times, right? Maybe you're cold, you haven't slept. How are you able to recalibrate that in your mind and find the strength to get through that constantly? Because you have that ability, like, you know, I think that is really cool. And I've thought about that. And it's a good question and it's a tough question. Like, what makes some people crumble, crumble under pressure and what makes other people not? And I've come down to, like, a part of it, I think, is in your DNA a little bit of just being, and it's straightforward, just being stubborn. Because... Like, think, think about it. Some kids are abused by their parents, right? They grow up and they abuse their kids. They're, then they're, their kids grow up and abuse their kids. And there's a whole long chain. But some, in some families, someone gets abused by their parents. Eventually, someone breaks the cycle. What causes that one person to break the cycle, but other families didn't have someone to break the cycle? And the only thing I can come up with was somewhere in your DNA, there's some stubbornness that said, you know what? I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to do the exact opposite of it. And that's always the, the way I thought of it when I was a kid. Like everything I learned, I learned from my father when I was a kid. Everything about my discipline, everything I have, even before the Marine Corps, I learned from my father. 
Because when I was a kid, I would look at my father and say, I want to be absolutely nothing like that man. So I'm going to do everything the exact opposite the way he did it. I'm going to look at everything he does and study it in detail, and I'm going to do everything the exact opposite. So what I never even come up with what makes someone think that way and what makes someone think, okay, I'm going to be the same and I'm going to be a crackhead. You know, someone's mother's a crackhead, so they become a crackhead. And their kids become a – what What causes someone to break the cycle? And all I can come up with is that we're just stubborn. Some people have that in stubbornness in their DNA, I think. I, I really – other than that, I couldn't come because up with are, anything. Yeah, because there are, there are some people who are really fit but mentally weak – and, and they quit real quick, right? And there are some people that might not on the surface look like they could make it, but they just refuse to give up and they make it true. Have you seen that over and over again? Does that apply oh, to all the time? All everything? the time. They're, I've seen some of the, the biggest fit, muscular men and, and just quit and tap out in so many areas of life, not even just in the boot camp, but yeah, definitely in boot camp too. And again, it was just that mental toughness. Mental toughness, which I, I just sum up as stubbornness. So yeah, that, they don't have that mental toughness. Where does it come from? You can't exactly say it comes from your childhood experiences, but, but because if your childhood experiences were bad, how did, how did that give you that? So the only thing I can come up with is that that mental toughness came from you being stubborn, having that somewhere in your DNA somewhere of just being stubborn and having that mental toughness. Because, yeah, I've seen guys like that crumble, crumble under the slightest bit of emotional or mental pressure. Sure, they can lift up a, a fucking car, but they, they just crumble under the pressure. I've seen that time and time again. Wow. So, Steve, I have a couple more, more questions before I wrap up. I think this has been really powerful. <laughs> I've run out of questions too. Uh, I just want to ask, ask you a quick question. You know, is this the time now to attack or to defend? You know, a lot of people are thinking, you know, should I just cower in? Just try, try to like, you know, just cover myself. It's like people are raining blows on you. Just like block it out. Or is this the time to go all out, uh, attack, take some risk, make things ha happen? What are your thoughts? I'm pretty sure you know what my answer is <laughs> going to be for that already. It's going to be attack. Uh, the and we, we have a saying in that we have in the, which is attack the hill, attack the hill. Whenever people, and, and Ray probably even told you about it too, that's what we do. We attack the hill. I'm sure he mentioned it to you. Yeah. That's what, the way we live. The bigger the obstacle, the harder you need to attack it. Otherwise, you're just going to get swallowed up by it. Because everyone sees that obstacle and slow down and start pussyfooting and bullshitting, and, and you're never going to overcome it. And on the easy stuff in life, they go hard on the easy stuff and slow on the hard stuff. When it needs to be opposite. You need to go hard, wow. go, go, go fast and hard on the hard stuff. That's the only way to, to, to beat it, right, is to attack it. So right now is the time, definitely is the time to attack. Think about it. If, if everyone else, your competitors, and you're in business, let's say you're in business, like how are you going to come out on top in the, during these tough times? Imagine everyone else is thinking that same way. All right, I'm going to stop marketing. I'm not going to ask people for money. I'm not going to sell I'm going to, because I don't want to offend people. I'm not going to ask people to buy shit from me because, you know, that maybe there's people out there that lost their jobs. That's bullshit. There's sure people lost their jobs. There's still plenty of people out there who need your health services, need your help, need your product. And there's still plenty of people out there that have money to spend because they're spending it online, doing shopping on, on dumb shit they don't need on Amazon so they can spend it with you and your product and service. So imagine if while everyone else is thinking that way, that they don't want to offend people and they're running away from the gunfire. And you're the only one in your industry, in your area, in your sector, in your town, in your city that runs towards the gunfire and attacking. When the dust settles and, and everything clears out, there's going to be one lone victorious person standing. There's only one left. The rest are going to be gone in obscurity. That They're just gone, disappeared because they crumbled under the pressure. So imagine if you could just hold the line, hold the line. Now, now you might not even, and it's going to be hard. I'm not saying there's not anything we're saying. Nothing that we're saying here is easy. Just because I'm making it sound easy is because I have confidence and faith that I'll always be able to figure it out no matter what happens. That's the only reason. Everything I'm saying is brutally, brutally difficult. Everything I'm saying. So don't make, make any mistake about that. It's just we're not going to go and hide and cower. We're going to go and attack it. So when the dust settles, there'll be one last standing person that's going to be in that industry, in that, in that sector or whatever. If you can just hold the line and stick it out and, and suck it up while everyone else crumbles and everyone else is hiding and you're the one that's on the attack, You'll be the last. And just imagine that. If you're the only one that can hold the line, you're the last man standing. Just imagine, like, what now, what, what future possibilities you have to go from there. You can do whatever you want from there. You're, you're unbeatable. You're unbreakable. If you do what everyone else is afraid to do, if you're the one that's willing to do the hard shit, the willing to run towards a gunfire, that, do the shit that everyone's afraid of, everyone's scared of, everyone's afraid they're going to offend people if they do it, and you're the only one willing to do it, that makes you unbeatable, unbreakable, and, and you're going to be victorious in the end. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, 
Steve, it seems like at the end of the day, it's about being fearless. You know, it's about overcoming the fear, being bigger than, than, than that, you know, taking risk. Uh, my final question, uh, as we wrap this, you know, I've run a question. I think just the energy and the mindsets you bring, you, you bring to it. I think, you see, a lot of people think they need business and marketing help now, but it is really all just a mindset. You know, are you on the offense or are you on the defense? Are you doing something? Are you doing nothing? You know, final question is how do you emerge victorious in these times? If you could just list it out as a summary of everything you've said so far. What is the art of victory in these times? The one word would be discipline. Discipline. Hold it. Again, what, the, what we just said in the last question really about attacking is having the discipline to hold the line, to take your punches, and realize, like, if, if, I don't know if, you, if you've ever been in a fight or, or you get punched in the face. Like, you, when you first start fighting, you're so afraid to get hit. You get punched clean in the face. You're like, all right, that sucked. But look, I'm still standing here. I'm still alive. Holy shit. So take those punches and have the discipline to not crumble the second you get hit and to stay in the fight. Just stay in the fight, hold the line, and accept this as the reality. The second you can get that perspective that this is the reality, accept it, turn this into a fun challenge. Turn this into your training ground. This is, this is my arena right now. This is my gladiator arena when the, when the shit goes sideways. Like, this is your chance to improve. So that's how you emerge, is by really just summing up everything we just talked about and accepting it, accepting this is just the way it is. You have no control over it. You only have control about how you react to this, how you deal with this. You have control of your own emotions only. You have control of your own character. That's how you emerge victorious is maintain your character, maintain your discipline, control your emotions, and, and you will be the last one standing. That's really how, how to do it because no one's dealt with this before. No one's dealt with this before. Realize that it's not just you. Like everyone thinks they're sitting there. They think, oh my God, poor me. It's the whole fucking world. It's happening to everyone. So let everyone else crumble while you're the one that maintains your discipline, maintains a positive attitude. Everyone around you is going to be like, that's a person I need to follow. That's a person I need to purchase from. That's a person I need coaching from because everyone else is just bitching and moaning and complaining. Wow. So that's really how you stay victorious. You wow. just maintain your discipline. <laughs> discipline. God dang, this is, this, this is great. This is, this, is, this is amazing. Steve, this has been a wonderful interview. Where can people find out more about you? Like, you know, you do coaching. What, what kind of coaching do you do? If people are interested, you take international clients or groups, yep. mostly in Asia. Uh, what kind of stuff do you do? You want to walk people through uh, some of the things you do and where can they find out more about you? Yeah, awesome. So yeah, we have in-person training in New York and that's in our gym, obviously. But now since, because of this, we've also went completely online with our coaching. So we have in, where's it? We have a guy from somewhere in the Middle East who's actually in our online coaching with our members from our gym because it's online. We have them from all over the United States now, members. So we, we do online coaching for fitness, for weight loss, for boot camp, for boxing classes, all online. So people can join on those from anywhere in the world. Then also I do one-on-one -on -one private coaching for business owners. And again, it's like you said, people think they need the new sales funnel, the new marketing strategy, the new sales script to say on the phone. You don't need any of that shit. You know most of that stuff already. Most business owners, they need the right mindset. They need the right discipline in their body, in their habits, in their nutrition, in their training. So that's the kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching that I provide for business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs, the ones who need that mind and body first. And then we can focus on the business because without the mind and the body, your business is useless. So we focus on coaching on the mind and the body in a one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's, that gets done anywhere in the world also. And the best place to reach is on Instagram. And it's steve.eckert1, the number one. So it's steve.eckert, E-C-K-E-R-T, the number one is probably the best place to reach me on Instagram. Awesome, awesome. Steve. And now I want to record a very special bonus segment right, right after this, right? So for anyone who is listening to this right now, if you are going to hear this, so if you share this or if you were to spread the word about this, then you are going to receive the next bonus segment right, that we're going to uh, shoot and record right now. All right, so um, that's it. So if you're here, um, share Steve stuff. And once you do it, prove to us and then we'll send you to the next bonus segment. So Steve, just a very bonus uh, segment recording for these people who are going to share. So just curious, business-wise, because you mentioned right that you have to adapt quickly and you have to uh, shift and pivot the business. So what exactly have you done? And if you could share to people who are running their own businesses, like how did you so quickly seriously pivot to online coaching? How was the transition like? And what do you do to ensure like, the maximum success in your current business right now? It, it was, again, the whole throughout time is putting those pieces into place constantly, like setting up your business, setting, having all those checklists and standard operating procedures already in place. That's really how it was. So now is the time if you don't have it, like literally for everything that gets done for our admin team, right? 
anything for admin that's behind the scenes, a computer for websites, for social media, for our sales funnels, every one of those things has a checklist, a written checklist. Specifically, go to the right corner, click on this, put this, put in this password, then click on this, copy and paste this to here. That's a written checklist for every single task we have. Then to go with that checklist, we have a Zoom recording just like this, which shows me actually doing the task on the computer with my video up in the corner, explaining what I'm doing, showing them exactly how to do it. So all, that gets done for every single task in the business. And we've been putting that together years ago for exactly for times like this. So now if someone needs help with it, I just have to review them to those checklists, those, and again, it comes back to the military training. We had SOPs, standard operating procedures. In the Marine Corps, there was a procedure for everything. And it would, they would go to extreme, like it was ridiculous how they had a, literally a, a checklist for every single thing. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna do that in the business. So when it comes time to either expanding, you know, you know, scaling, you have that stuff in place so you can duplicate what you're doing, duplicate and scale, or it comes time to train someone new and onboard them. Maybe your admin is moving up to another position. So now they have the tools to train someone because you put those pieces into place. So it's really putting in the work, doing the due diligence, to set up the structure, set up the strategies and structure. And if you didn't have those before, that's what allowed us to do it so quickly because without knowing it, we prepared, again, by doing the basics. When it comes to combat, when it comes to war, anyone, the, the, the side that wins is a side, the side that sticks to the basics and fundamentals under pressure consistently. That's it. That's who wins the war. No, no fancy, no, we really didn't take anything fancy to do. It was just, we already had Zoom up and running. We already had... Uh, an online portal, like an online website with all of our business information on it. We already had the standard operating procedures on Google, Google Drive, which was shared with all of our team members. So they all went to work at home. They just had to go and log into Google Drive and they had everything, everything at their fingertips, piece by piece, step by step, what they needed to do. And then for the new things like the online sessions or whatever, we just created real quick new standard operating procedures for that. And you're always going to, you're always going to your SOPs are always going to evolve. You're always going to learn new things. Like during this crisis, again, use this as time. If you already have a standard operating procedure for everything, use this as a time to evolve that, to add to that, because now you're noticing new things that you need to think about in your business. So this is a time to, to add to that, to maybe change your SOPs, or if you don't have one, this is the perfect time to create it. Because it does take, it's very time consuming to do, but we have all the time in the world now. So it comes down again to those basics and fundamentals and this, having this structure in place. And if you don't have the structure in place and you realize that, so now this, this situation gave you the awareness you don't have the structure in place, use this time to build that structure. So now you'll be flowing and you'll keep those beats going when the next war comes because the next battle is right down the street. It's going to happen. It's going to be bigger. and You never know what's going to happen. So it's getting that stuff in place, doing that stuff, doing the due diligence, putting in the work to plan and prepare and map out everything about the business. So Every one of those things is, is every task we have has a written checklist describing word for word and has an actual video showing actually how to do it. So I don't have to keep reteaching someone or remind someone. So then each one of those has a link in Google Drive to each task has a Google Drive link. So if someone needs it, they go right to a checklist. I mean, right to a spreadsheet, click right on that link and bam, they find it. It's also right in Google Drive. So it's right at your fingertips, everything you need. So just putting that structure into place. And it takes discipline to do that. It takes time. It takes hard work, but it's worth it because that's stuff you're going to have then that's going to get you through this stuff. So when it's time to shift the business, you have everything already in place. You just have to make some tweaks and some adjustments and you just keep going. Like we were on lockdown on the 16th in New York. Literally, they said 16th, 8 p.m., New York businesses have to close. We did our last training session from 7 to 8 p.m. So we ended at 8 p.m. on the lockdown. We had online sessions going live the next day. You wow. have it right at your fingertips. You have it resources right there. It's just we make excuses. I'm not ready. I don't have the right lighting. I don't have a good enough camera. I don't have a mic. I don't have the, the resources. That, that's bullshit, and those are excuses. So I just look at my arm, and I say, you know what? We're going to make it happen, and we'll adapt on the fly. We'll figure it out as we go along. We'll make it happen. It's not going to be perfect in the beginning. It might not be. It's never going to be perfect. So once you realize that, shit's never going to be perfect. You're going to deal with it. There's going to be bumps. There's going to be roadblocks. But all those are just now more learning points for you to make your – standard operating procedures even better for the next time. And you're constantly adding that and constantly evolving in your operating procedures to make it better and better and better from different situations that come up, different things you learn along the way. So that's really what it comes down to is just having that, that, those, that structure in place. It's all discipline and structure. All Amen to that. Really. Thank you for awesome. sharing, Steve. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Awesome, Steve. Uh, 
Thank you. We have ended Thank very you. nicely.